Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm surprised, the full house. Um, thank you for coming. Um, this talk is called Project Necromancy. Um, it's about how we, uh, my team at Red Hat is trying to um, sort of revitalize a couple of upstream projects. Um, I'm Dave Wild. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, my partner in crime, Doug Mendesabel, was supposed to be here. Um, I talked to him today. He tested positive for COVID on Friday, and so he couldn't come. So um, best wishes to Doug. Send him a nice note if you know him. Uh, he was pretty bummed that he couldn't come. Um, so Project Necromancy. Um, I, someone asked me uh, today, uh, or the other day, um, they were surprised to see Keystone kind of in the description of this talk because Keystone is Keystone. It's um, a vitally important project to, uh, to OpenStack and to, and to other things. And they were wondering why, why it's in here and, and what was happening. And that's uh, really Keystone is, is the reason for this talk and um, is gonna be what I'm going to be focusing on mostly. Um, a lot of this we're going to uh, try and implement in Barbican. Um, but we haven't, and really this is just uh, what we've done to sort of uh, reestablish Keystone, get it in good shape, and hopefully if you're involved in a project that's facing similar challenges to what uh, we were facing in Keystone, this will help. Uh, the problem, um, it was becoming difficult to get new code and bug fixes merged in, into Keystone. Um, Keystone switched to like a committee PTL, uh, type of a thing, and uh, several of the core reviewers were, were no longer active. Um, I'll get back and I, I restate the problem later on, and I'll get back into some more details about the problem, but that's really what we faced. Um, Lance Bragstad, I don't know if anyone knows him. I'm sure you do. Uh, he's, he, was, he was on our team, um, and we really realized that we had a problem when uh, he, he let us know that he was moving to a different opportunity at Red Hat. Um, and would no longer be working on OpenStack. So while it was sad to see him go, um, I'm really excited for what he's doing and he's really enjoying his new role. But that meant that we had the problem of, he was really one of the last, um, last cores, one of the last stable cores on Keystone. So a little bit about our team. Um, we are a, uh, we're a small team at Red Hat, we mostly work on uh, integrating security and, security and compliance features into Tripolo, uh, FIPS and SRBAC. Um, you can blame Ade Lee for FIPS, Lance and Doug for, uh, for SRBAC. Um, those are the, but those are the kind of initiatives that we work on at Red Hat. So we have a, uh, we have a vested interest in Keystone and Barbican. Um, Barbican, the, uh, actually Doug is the PTL for both projects right now. So uh, he's, on our, he, he's on our team. Um, Yes, yeah, so we, 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 we really needed to be able to get things into Keystone. Um, what we have done and what we are doing. The first thing that we did was get the weekly IRC meetings going. Uh, they had kind of, they'd kind of fallen off the, uh, the radar. Uh, weeks would go by um, where there was no weekly IRC meeting. Um, and we we felt like this was a good first start to get the uh, get to get the project back in shape. Uh, so so Doug started picking up the IRC meetings. A um, couple of a couple of uh, things that we we did with the IRC meetings. We picked a time. Um, use UTC makes it easier. Scheduling in your time zone is is rough. Um, he updated the Open Dev meetings uh, page. Um, it's just a pull request if you go there. Advertise that the meetings are uh, back on track and that we hold them every week that we can. We didn't hold one this week due to the summit. Um, and personally, I find the courtesy ping very valuable. Add your, add your neck to the list of names on the etherpad and uh, you'll get pinged. It helps me remember. Um, the next thing we did was review-a-thons. Uh, I'll, I'll go into more detail, but um, we were having a problem in Keystone getting, getting reviews um, from people, and there were there were a lot of old old patches hanging out about there. So we came up with this idea of reviewathons, and we implemented it in around November of 2021. Um, this is this is where I'm restating the problem. So 
we realized when Lance was moving on that a lot of people that have worked on Keystone um, have moved on. Careers progress, your priorities change. Um, and so it's not, really, it's not really that people wanted to not work on Keystone anymore. Um, interests also change, but it's really that, that people had progressed and there was kind of an old guard and they, they had moved on and so we really needed to, to take it over again. Um, the other problem that we had is that um, myself and Doug both, I think Doug would also admit that we had very limited knowledge of Keystone, um, especially some of the more complicated inner workings of Keystone. So it was, it was hard for us to do quality reviews on our own. That's a, that's a, it's a pretty heavy lift, uh, the Keystone code base, uh, getting to understand it and be able to provide a, a good quality review. So we, uh, we started doing these things called a review-a-thon. A review-a-thon is, um, we have a weekly meeting. We use Google Meet, you don't have to. Um, Google Meet works because it's fairly ubiquitous. Uh, but a weekly meeting where interested parties can come and we sort of co-reviewed code together. One person will share their screen. Um, we go through the review, we do research, talk about it. Um, and put our comments in the review. And what, an important thing is Keystone has a bunch of sub-projects. I think a lot of the other projects do too. Um, we try and touch all of the sub-projects every week just to make sure at least that there's, there's nothing new that we're, that we're missing that, that can get reviewed. Um, takeaways of review-a-thon. So we've been doing review-a-thon since November of 2021. Um, I, I think my biggest takeaway is that it's working. Uh, I, the uh, Stackalytics only has Wallaby, so I just did some uh, Garrett math. Um, by my, my count, we've, we've reviewed 187 patches since November, um, merged 101 of those, and abandoned 39 of those, more on abandoning uh, later. Um, and we're starting to move through the backlog of patches. Most of the recent patches have, have good reviews and are, are you know, going through that back and forth cycle of communication via Garrett. Um, the other ta another takeaway is that virtual face-to-face, virtual face -face Google Meet, I think is really important. Um, it gives the, it's a more natural feel than doing this over IRC or something. Uh, you, you get to know the people personally that you're, that you're doing these reviews with. And there is a, I get a, a, a sense of mentorship by doing it um, virtually. The, uh, I'll talk more about mentorship later. Um, and, and the other thing that I, this is, this is a personal one I came up with, is the communal sense of ownership of the reviews. Um, I really feel like I have, a, I have a much better sense of ownership of the reviews. I, I check on them more often than I would if it was just me going through and, and reviewing. Um, it definitely helps the people that are submitting code to get their code reviewed. Uh, so I, th I feel like it, it's, it's, it's really helped to revitalize the community. Second set of takeaways, um, keep it light and informal. It's, our, our review a thon is very light, informal. We chat, we talk about other things. Um, I don't feel like it should be a, it should feel like a chore that you're, you're doing this, this thing. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, a community thing. It's, it's doing what we, you know, we all, we all really love open source and, and part, of, part of doing open source is reviewing other people's code and, and making sure that it gets in there. So it shouldn't feel like a burden or a chore. Um, if it's an old patch that needs to be rebased, try the button. If that doesn't work, try taking five minutes to rebase it manually, see if you can. Um, it lets people know that, you know, people are kind of surprised when they get a, a six-month-old patch that all of a sudden gets reviewed, you know, and so we, you let them know that you're looking at it, and if it needs work, do the work, and we'll get it merged in. Um, the other thing is don't be afraid to abandon. There's a lot of stuff with, with Keystone that we found that was just not applicable anymore. It had been implemented elsewhere, or that bug had been fixed by a different patch, so it really helps to feel like you're you're cleaning up an old house, you know, sweeping out the attic, getting rid of those, 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 old, uh, those old patches. 
um, cover all the projects, I mentioned that. And uh, the biggest takeaway is, it goes back to the mentorship idea that I mentioned earlier, is that our project knowledge is increasing because Lance will join when he can. Uh, Christy also wanted to be here, also had a COVID scare. Um, they're, they're two core reviewers and they've been doing Keystone for a very long time. Uh, Gage, was, Gage joined our review-a-thons early on, but he, he's moved on. Um, but being able to review code with people that have that much knowledge about Keystone has been really helpful for, for me personally, because I, I, I can ask questions about the, about the code, about what things are doing, um, and, and really learn from someone with that experience rather than diving into it myself and trying to, trying to figure it out on my own. It, the, the reviews would take much longer and feel much heavier of a lift. Um, a couple of keys to success about review-a-thons. I, like I said, I think they're very successful. Um, pick a consistent time, just like the weekly meeting. It won't work for everyone, but you do your best with your, your community. Um, we, our, our team at Red Hat has a, uh, Upstream Fridays that we like to do, so dedicate at least one day a week to Upstream, um, all things Upstream. And so we do the review-a-thons on, on Friday morning um, try to announce them on IRC. Uh, the other thing that Gage, Gage specifically told me this was important was I send out a calendar invite to anyone that wants it. Um, that really helped him justify it with his boss, that time that he was spending. Um, you know, his, that it, it helps book that time. It helps remind you. I think the calendar invites are a really, really good idea. Um, and the last key to success is make it happen. Um, just like the weekly meeting, sometimes you won't have very much participation. There won't be a lot of people there. Um, people travel, PTO, all kinds of things, but be as consistent as you can and make it happen and keep it going when, when people aren't there. Um, I think that, that consistency is, is important for, uh, to, to make it a success. Um, the other thing that we did was uh, PTL ship. This was um, this was Doug's slide. Uh, so I, I'll I'll go over it. I'll go over it quick. Um, it's really just doing the PTL, the PTL job. Uh, he fell on that sword. Um, I'd like to take one of them off of his hands when I'm when I'm able. Uh, but yeah, monitor the IRC channel. Be available. Um, uh, monitor the mailing lists and complete the liaison tasks. Uh, you could become the the uh, default liaison for cross project efforts when you are the PTL. Uh, the other the other thing that we're doing is um, this thing called Path to Core uh, that that we came up with. Um, it's it's been on my uh, goals to become a, a, key, a Keystone Core reviewer. Um, I think it's on a couple other people's goals to become Keystone core reviewers. And so we wanted to make it, a, make it an actual business priority to get core, review, core reviewers on our team. Um, so the, the path to core is really a commitment to Keystone, monitoring it, answering questions, uh, working on it, doing, doing code reviews, um, and really learning the, the code. And I feel like review-a-thons have, have been very, very helpful in this. I, I'm much further along now than I would have been had I had we not been doing these, had I just been been doing it alone. Um, stable core, this does not, uh, you would kind of think as a PTL, you would, you would get stable core by default. You don't really, you have to put in a, a request, I believe, to intra, infra. Uh, to get stable core. Um, it's a little bit, the reviews are a little bit different for the stable branches. Um, and Doug has stable core now. It took him a little while to get it, but we're gonna start doing review a thon specifically for uh, stable core backports um, now, that, now that he has that. Um, future ideas. So here's some, some other things that we, uh, we'd like to, Look at look at doing. Um, we've done outreach in the pa outreachy in the past. Uh, we'd like to pick that up again. Um, if anyone knows anyone that's interested in working on Keystone, reach out. Uh, we can get them. Uh, even if they don't know anything about the code, we can get them started on that. 
Um, I was thinking of also doing a virtual style hackathon, Google Meet, maybe once a month or quarter, um, pick a bug or a feature and pair program on it uh, and see how far we get. I think that that would be a, a interesting, uh, fun exercise. Um, so that's something else that I'd like to, to try. Um, spec review-a-thons. Uh, specs, are, specs are their own beast. Um, I think like a dedicated review-a-thon for, for going through a, a big specification. We have one for OAuth 2 that neither Doug or I fully understand yet, but we need to get reviewed um, because people are already trying to land code for it. So um, those, are some, those are some future ideas that we have. Um, so that actually does it for my talk. I wanted to, I wanted to save some time um, for feedback. If you guys have any ideas, if you have any questions or comments, um, I set up an etherpad. It's essentially blank right now, but I'm, I'm really curious if anyone has any uh, comments, suggestions, questions. Um, the, the, the technician asked that if, you do, if you're gonna speak, please use the mic over there. Um, so that it's captured on video. Uh, thank you. I'm dead horse just about everywhere, IRC, Twitter. Um, you can reach out to me there. Um, Doug has moved to Matrix faster than I did, so he's D. Mendeza, you may also know him as Red Robot um, from, the, uh, from his previous IRC days. Hey yes? Hello from the Ironic team. So it's not a question, just a few comments. Uh, review meetings, awesome. We do that, it works. For specs, absolutely, otherwise people don't review specs. You also may want to have fewer specs. That's one of the things we are doing. We're replacing some trivial specs with storyboard items. If it, so the question is, does it really have to be a spec? Or, uh, as to stable cores, at some point, we just added all ironic cores to ironic stable. It was okay. scary, nothing broke. Yeah, that's a good um, idea, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of hints. Thank you. Hello from the Nova team. Yeah, we did the same thing with stable core recently. We just merged the two teams. Okay. Again, scary, nothing's broken yet, all good. Um, the one question I had is um, me primarily, but also other people, we take, make it, took an effort recently in Nova to start stripping back features that nobody's using, whether they're old legacy drivers that no longer have testing this kind of thing. Have Keystone, have you guys looked at doing something like this? Is it something you think you'll do down the line? Um, anything like that, basically getting rid of stuff that nobody understands and you don't know if it works. We have, we have not. Um, that's a really good idea. I think there are parts of Keystone that, that no one uses anymore. Um, I also know that there are chunks of Keystone that, that really need some, um, some review of uh, the, L, the LDAP backend, for, uh, for instance. I know that has some, there's some dragons in the LDAP code. Um, so there, there, there are definitely places that, that I would like to kind of do a, uh, you know, refactor a thon to go and, and go through those with a fine tooth comb. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea about uh, uh, killing features that, that we don't need. Right. Thank and you. One, one other thing as well, it's not actually directed at you, but if there's anyone in the audience or anyone watching the video later that knows a lot about SQL Alchemy, please ping me on IRC, Stephen Finn, <laughs> so I can close out the um, SQL Alchemy and my great migration. <laughs> uh, hi, so uh, from the TC uh, now. Uh, you mentioned about, I know that Keystone was in this DPL, distributed PTL uh, models for some time, and if I understood correctly, you said that, that that was one of the issues and problems with Keystone. So so can you like explain more uh, what was the problem with this, this DPL? Maybe this model doesn't work li like it should, and like TC wanted it to, to work, so maybe we will need to change something there. Or... Yeah. Uh... Or it was like like just because in this DPL model you have to have some lieutenants uh, for for liaisons for some different stuff. So maybe it was just a problem that there was n no those people at all. So yeah, it was kind of it was kind of the latter. I think it was um, that 
the 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 PTLs that were identified just didn't have the bandwidth to take care of, take care of everything, and and maybe we're assuming that the other ones were were handling it. Um, so I, I I don't I don't have any specific answers to mm -hmm. to what what our problems were, but I know that um, and this and this would be a question that Doug would be able to answer much better, as he is the PTL and worked with Lance on on taking over the the PTL ship of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think that there were I think that there were especially on IRC I think that there were there were times when people didn't know exactly who to reach out to. A single the single source of contact for for Keystone okay okay thanks hi uh, I'm Chris Morgan and I look after the ops operators meetups and uh, we also uh, adopted some abandoned docks and uh, you know I think that this is tremendous food for thought because the actual ops meetups team has mostly gone away and the, uh, the people who said oh yeah we'll we'll help you maintain these docks all kind of went away so it occurs to me I'm, I'm basically uh, in charge of two bodies <laughs> yeah. so this is actually probably the best talk of the the week so I just want oh, to say thank you so much for the uh, inspiration because we actually have an ops meetup tomorrow, <clears throat> the process is so broken that a lot of people didn't even know about it. So the communication and the, and the predictability of where to find them, et cetera, is, is fantastic. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else? I am the, uh, I'm the meeting runner for our team, and I love to give people Time back, so enjoy the uh, eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. I saw that you had the outreach thing. We run a small private cloud.